Over the past few years as a Doctor Who fan, there has been two main things that I've been thoroughly enjoying reviewing on this channel, the first of which is of course Big Finish audio dramas, and the second is the increase in Doctor Who records over the past few years, which does of course bring me to today's Doctor Who product review, as I'm going to be taking a look at the one and only, the glorious, the notorious, Doctor Who Spare Parts, as written by Mark Platt. Now this is a limited edition vinyl record collector set that is exclusive to the Big Finish website, limited edition to only 500 units. Now this release did in fact come out in celebration of the story itself in 2017, when Big Finish asked the listeners to in fact vote for the best Doctor Who Big Finish stories from the main range releases 1 to 15. Of course I have already reviewed spare parts as a story. This review is going to be a little bit of a two-in-one. I'm kind of going to take a look at the story again. However, do a little bit of a reflection with the episode itself. Has my opinion changed? This review is mainly going to focus on this rather lovely looking vinyl record release. Of course, if you do not want to spend £88.99 on this vinyl record collector set, then you can in fact buy this release digitally on the Big Finish website for I do believe around £2.99 and when it is on sale it's normally around only £1, which is definitely worth every single penny. Go and listen to it now if you haven't already. However, if you are a fan of the story and have listened to it on multiple occasions or maybe even have the CD already, then maybe it might be worth considering this rather stunning looking vinyl record release. There will be all of the links that you need in the description below, as well as a link to listen to the trailer itself. So this record release is in fact slightly bigger to some of the big finish releases that we've seen released over the past year or two in Asda, HMV and a few other retailers because this is in fact a whole 4 LP record set, meaning that all 4 of the records are in fact contained within this box which is made of rather heavy duty cardboard. Now this is a really lovely premium product, it has a lovely glossy finish added over the top which really nicely emphasises the artwork that has now been upgraded and really gives it the sense of a premium feel quality product that as I say if you are a fan of the story then it's definitely worth getting because it's just absolutely beautiful and you can look at it in awe as opposed to just having the CD or download version but the cardboard itself really nicely protects the records on the inside of the box as well as looking absolutely beautiful at the same time it's multitasking and it's cardboard how clever I also absolutely love the way that this vinyl record release is in fact kind of making spare parts feel like a cinematic blockbuster. I absolutely love the fact that along the top it has starring Peter Davidson and Sarah Sutton in and then goes on to say spare parts underneath. It just sounds cool, it sounds grand and it does in fact look like a cinema poster in its own little way. Imagine a world where spare parts was an actual film. What a lovely world that would be. But I and then of course towards the very bottom of this, do you also have the inclusion of the title of the product being a limited vinyl edition along with your normal big finish logo saying we love stories which perhaps they should upgrade that a little bit to say we love stories as well as very pretty looking vinyls but that'll probably be a little bit too long for a slogan hmm Along the sides of the artwork, we do almost have the sidebar effect once again returning. Ah, oh, the days of the sidebar. Remember those? I remember them well. We have the inclusion of the 8th Doctor movie logo, this time round upgraded to feature a rather lovely, almost silvery metal design, looking incredibly nice and bold. As much as I do love the new series 13th Doctor logo, I think that especially on record collector sets, the classic series Doctor Who logo just works much better. It looks nice. It's it stands out a lot more and especially on classic series Doctor Who it makes the product look generally I actually think a lot smarter. Below this we do also have spare parts rather nicely printed along with the writer being Mark Platt as well as a few different people who are of course a part of the cast of this rather brilliant story. Once again very much giving off that vibe of a cool movie poster. And speaking of a cool looking cinematic poster taking a look at the artwork itself 
it's absolutely gorgeous. It is beautiful. I do absolutely love the original cover art for Spare Parts. However, at the same time, I'm glad that they've upgraded it for this record release because it works so much better and makes the story generally look a lot grander because the original one is very simplistic and cool looking. However, this design just generally looks a lot more modern and a bit more effective in its Photoshop design. Of course, we have a rather dark-esque sort of outside colour that is fading in, almost like the shadows are lurking, with this rather lovely looking cybernetic bluey purple glow emanating from the very middle. The cover art has been created by Tom Webster as well as Clayton Hickman, and overall they've done an absolutely phenomenal job. I love the fact that we've got the stone or metal ceiling coming over the Mondesian town below, and we have almost the light breaking in here at the very top, with the light coming down onto the fifth doctor, looking very worried indeed, along with a lot of metal and debris coming around the side. Of course, the main focus of this artwork is the 10th planet Cyberman himself, looking incredibly cool indeed. I might be wrong, but this isn't, of course, one of the 10th planet Cybermen from the actual 1966 serial. It's, I do believe, an upgraded version, and no pun intended with it being a Cyberman. I think that it might be from an adventure in space and time, maybe, or it might even be somebody's cosplay costume, actually, that has been photoshopped a little bit further to look like the one from the actual story, but it does look a little bit cleaner, it looks less shabby, it's not been duct taped together, very much like the costumes as seen throughout the 1960s episode, having like tape over the eyes. This time round we have a rather tightly fitted cloth face, with of course the light there coming up to the very top of the silver helmet, looking really lovely indeed, a lot of and metal coming around the side, and of course the main focus of this cover art is this glorious thing down at the very bottom, the one, the only cyber horse, with cyber warden slash policeman on the top. Come on, Big Finish, do a four-part box set, Doctor Who and the Cyber Horse. You know you want it, it's going to be brilliant. But this, I think, looks wonderful. I, I really love the fact that they've gone a lot more creative on this cover art, because, of course, for those of you that have listened to Spare Parts, you will know that there is this cybernetic horse in the story, and it is great to have a visual aid of that now on the cover of this release, so when you are listening to it, it kind of makes the story feel a bit more real. Everything about this design I just absolutely love. I love the inclusion of the augmented limbs coming up to the main body of the horse, itself, as well as almost that Terminator style eyepiece at the top of the horse's head, with that red glow coming from the sides and the metal almost creating a skull on the left hand side of the face. Another really lovely inclusion is the headlight on the top of the horse's head, which is a really lovely reference of course to the 10th planet Cybermen, and the way that they also had a light coming from their forehead seen there at the very top, and of course we have the main warden there in the very middle also, which looks very similar to that of a 10th planet Cyberman. I like the fact that they've kind of stripped it back to basics. We have the inclusion of the chess unit, which looks a little bit more Tomb of the Cybermen in its design. of cybernetics going on with the eye sockets and the tubing coming around the shoulders. Everything about it is just brilliant and dark and gothic, and I love it. And of course, just to really send that impact of the gothicness, we have a lovely gothic headstone there, along with a dark looking cityscape in the very background of the horse, of course, lurking around after the curfew at night. Flipping around to the back now, of course, due to this featuring four hull records, it is in fact a rather weighty box set. However, we do have a continuation of that really nice and smart design on the back. We have the inclusion of a few cogs coming around the side. Originally, I did in fact think that this was just a standard pattern. However, upon camera, it, this does in fact look incredibly obvious, but we do have a rather great close-up of a 10th planet Cyberman head with the two eyes there ominously looking on with the mouth at the very bottom, a few more cogs there as well, and of course the cast list for this story very nicely and clearly printed, also stating that this episode was written by Mark Platt and directed by Gary Russell, and it does of course also include a behind-the-scenes documentary on the fourth and final record of this set. The bottom of the box you do also have the inclusion of a little bit of company information and due to this being a limited edition collector set we have the special sticker which does of course state that this is unit 361 out of 500 which I like the fact that this has been included because I do like my limited edition records to in fact have a unique identification number on them and of course in the very middle we do also have the inclusion of a story write-up to give a basic idea of the story itself not really giving too much away however I'm assuming if you're paying 
88 odd pound for a vinyl record collector set. You've probably already listened to spare parts before and know exactly what the story entails. I also really love the inclusion of the quote from the Doctor there at the very top which does of course read I'm not even sure they are people by the end, they're just so many tinned leftovers and a rather nice description of the story itself just underneath this, making the story once again look incredibly ominous and gothic. Along the spine of the case there is also the inclusion of Doctor Who once again and spare parts which is incredibly handy if you have no self-control like me and by this point have several Doctor Who vinyl record collector sets on your shelf making it a lot easier to spot along with all of the other records of missing 1960s stories from the Demon Music Group which have been quickly growing on my shelf over the past year and now this box set can nicely sit alongside them. Something that I wasn't expecting with this vinyl collector set is that the records do in fact slide out of the side of the box. It is very much more like a sleeve rather than a box that we've seen on the previous Demon Music Group releases over the past year or so with the Daleks Master Plan and of course Evil of the Daleks to name a few. However, on the inside of the box it is in fact a rather similar design. It's a cardboard sleeve that has been added over the vinyl record sleeve in order to protect the records further but also provide further information about the story itself. So record one does in fact feature some writer's notes from Mark Platt talking about the story itself and its origins as well as of course the cyber head there in the very middle and on the back of this we have a rather nice image of the fifth doctor once again looking rather concerned. The second vinyl is a really lovely touch and it is in fact the rather notorious cover to the original 1 to 50 range version of spare parts. I really love the fact that this has been included because it's just a nice hark back to the original version and it kind of shows how far Big Finish have came over the past few years. And flipping this around to the back once again we get another variation of image of the fifth Doctor with disc 2 there printed at the very bottom. The third record of the set this time round covers behind the scenes at recording including a few cast images as well as some further information relating to the story itself printed in the very middle and you guessed it on the back of this we have another variation of image of Peter Davison as the fifth Doctor once again looking off ominously into the distance. The fourth and final record of the set is something that is very similar to the recent Big Finish records that have been released in HMV, Asda and a few other stores where we have the production credits on the very back talking about all the talented people that have worked on this release. Sound design for the story itself including the original sound design as well as the vinyl mastering that has been done by Jamie Robertson and the theme tune itself. And of course on the inside of all of the sleeves we have the inclusion of the records themselves you've just been contained in your standard paper sleeve and then of course in the very middle we do have your regular record this time around it is just a standard black which I must admit after taking a look at quite a few records over the past two years now especially the Demon Music group ones having all the splatters and things this one does look a little bit plain however nice nevertheless I imagine if it was released now it will probably be like a cool splatter design or something like that however we do have once again the inclusion of the cover art there printed in the very middle and then the same goes for the back as well. This is in fact the fourth disc of the set, F4 contains the behind the scenes documentary. Spare Parts, as written by Mark Platt, is an adventure within Doctor Who history that belongs a part of a very small club of Doctor Who stories that have almost been given their own podium of hierarchy above every other Doctor Who story. Of course, this episode shares the podium with the likes of Genesis of the Daleks, Earthshock, arguably Remembrance of the Daleks, and of course Rob Sherman's Dalek. However, of course, the one thing linking all of those stories is the fact that they are TV episodes of Doctor Who. They're going out to a much wider audience because they are much more accessible due to them being more visual as opposed to being an audio drama. Spare Parts, however, is a very unique contribution to that podium because it is indeed an audio drama and I think it would be a fair assumption to make that even if you have never listened to Big Finish before, you have heard of Spare Parts and that is simply because every single Big Finish fan pretty much fails to shut up about it and that is for good reason because Spare Parts is one of those Doctor Who stories from the early days of Big Finish that is a foundation story. It deals with the evolution and creation of the Cybermen. It is Genesis of the Daleks 
but for the Cybermen. And it deals with a story that is incredibly strong, but also shows the strengths and benefits of an alien monster such as the Cybermen, and shows how they can be utilised in a way that plays with emotion, but also at the same time can be incredibly ruthless. Oh, and just before I actually get into the main bulk of the review itself, I thought I'd just point out this amazing, lovely creation. It is, of course, the Tomb of the Cybermen episodic t-shirt. I thought it was very relevant to this review, so I thought I'd wear it. It is currently available from Hero Collector as a part of that episodic collection. Basically, they're doing artwork from different stories of the title along the bottom, making some rather eye-catching designs, as you can see. This one being a very 60s-themed Doctor Who t-shirt. Of course, you have the emblem from Tomb of the Cybermen men there and the title at the very bottom as well which probably won't be on shot. Also available is in fact Genesis of the Daleks in a rather lovely burgundy design which I suppose once again even though this is a Dalek story it is very relevant because Genesis of the Daleks this episode is Genesis of the Cybermen so yeah those are currently available to order now I think around 15 to 20 pounds. Recommend checking them out if you're a fan of classic series Doctor Who and want to show that appreciation within a t-shirt, so you can wear your appreciation, I suppose. I do believe that previously I reviewed this story back in 2017 when the record set was released. Little did I know, a few years later I would then end up buying a record player and then as a result buying this record collector set. So it is an absolute joy to be looking back on this story and seeing how or if my opinion has altered from that original review. I didn't go back and watch my previous review because I wanted to approach this story from a fresh perspective having not listened to it for quite a while, and it's just a joy to listen to. It is one of those stories that regardless how many times you revisit it, you always spot something different or spot something new that makes you love this story even more than you did already. And for those of you that have been a fan of Big Finish for many, many years, you'll probably admit that it's one of those episodes that you do always go back to simply because it is so strong. Of course, naturally within the new series of Doctor Who, as it did go into with the behind the scenes, of this record collector set, it stated that new series Doctor Who wanted to do something similar and of course Russell T Davies got permission to do a story very similar to Spare Parts and that as a result turned into Age of Steel and Rise of the Cybermen which looking back doesn't really share many components with Spare Parts. In fact if anything it goes against the idea of Spare Parts because Mark Platt when writing this story wanted to do an episode that avoided the trope that Genesis of the Daleks had, having this man or woman figure that just wanted to create something that would benefit them and as a result have negative connotations on the rest of society that they have came from. Of course a character like Davros, Mark Platt wanted to avoid creating a Davros of the Cybermen and of course a few years later, little did Big Finish know, the new series would then go on to create John Lumick who is pretty much exactly that and that is not to so I do not like Rise of the Cybermen and Age of Steel. As a kid, I absolutely loved it, and looking back, it is an episode that I have nostalgia about because it's one of my childhood memories of Doctor Who. However, Spare Parts takes it to a different level. We have the absence of that figure that is human. We just have the Cybermen, the origins of the Cybermen, and how they have been developed from the Mondasians into these creatures that are emotionless and ruthless. We have what is very odd about this story, a very emotional serial because we have the Hartley family that is almost the depiction of Mondas. You see Mondas through their eyes, you have the story introduced through them and as a result throughout the story's duration you see how the cyber technology is about to rip apart their family. Fifth Doctor is an excellent Doctor to put with the Cybermen. Of course we previously had Earthshock on TV, the Fifth Doctor's only main outing with the Cybermen. Of course he did also have an appearance with them in the Five Doctors. However, this story, because the Fifth Doctor is so emotionally driven, we get to see a lovely connection between Earthshock and Spare Parts, dealing with the death of Adric, and of course Nessa being a part of the TARDIS team as well. We have a number of different references to him throughout the duration of this story. Very similar, in fact, to the Doctor Who Big Finish main range story that was released in 2019, being Warzone and Conversion. Of course, seeing the Fifth Doctor, Nessa and Tegan dealing with the loss of Adric, and once again the Cybermen taking over almost this colony world. So it did have a few similar traits to that story. However, Spare Parts kind of did it first. 
Something that I also noticed from listening to the episode on record, of course being able to sit back and kind of oddly feel more immersed in the story, I've noticed that when it comes to vinyl records, especially when I'm listening to a record of Big Finish, I kind of feel more immersed in the story. It's very odd, it's something very similar to the Demon Music Group 1960s Doctor Who serials, where you can kind of potter around your room doing things, cleaning up whatever, whilst listening to the actual story, whilst it's playing on record, it just sounds nice. And I think that this story, it highlighted for me how immersive it is. I think that Mark Platt does an incredible job of depicting Mondas, which of course you've seen it so much throughout Doctor Who history being referred to here and there, of course as recently as episodes such as World Enough and Time, and it just goes to show that within this story, just because it is on record, it doesn't mean that it feels like an audiobook, because this episode is anything but an audiobook. I could imagine everything that it is going on. Of course, we have this lovely layout of a 50s style Planet Earth piece, so it is much more before our time. However, we have the cybernetic horses strutting about the streets at night, with the wardens on top, which have been equally converted, like 50-50%, a very eerie and zombified kind of design. And you have the Fifth Doctor and Nessa walking about, or running about, I suppose, after curfew you in the darkness of Mondas, and then you of course have the fog and the ice coming from the solid, almost concrete ceiling that towers over the city itself, with of course this cybernetic factory and the church bell in the background, everything about it is just so visual, and that is also of course depicted on the cover of this record as well. I absolutely love the fact that they've gone through the effort to visualise the cyber horse, as I've no doubt mentioned already throughout this review, and I think the way as well of choosing the Tenth Planet Cybermen, as I've mentioned as recently in my review of the Robert Harrop monochrome uh, statue of the Tenth Planet Cyberman costume, although, yes, very clearly, it is a man in a suit, and that was clear within the Tenth Planet as an episode, it looks quite cheap, but it's equally incredibly eerie, showing how these people have been converted, and I think that Nicholas Briggs does a phenomenal job of doing the voice, of it being so unsettling, and having different voices for the different types of Cybermen. You have the normal Cybermen in the background, then you have another specific Cyberman that has a slightly more lighter and more emotional kind of voice, which is delivering a very emotional scene within the mid-half of this story, which for those of you that have listened to Spare Parts, you'll know exactly what scene that I'm on about. Yes, that one with the robotic Trilby bird. It's eerie and it gets me every single time, just how chilling and cold that scene is. It is by far one of the best within Big Finish history. And then, of course, you also have the leader, Cyberman, as well. It's, of course, Zeng, who has a much more deeper and more threatening type of voice, which, when it comes to the final scenes of this story, you really do feel like Mondas is at its end, which is... I love Doctor Who stories that aren't light and fluffy, and Spare Parts is the polar opposite of light and fluffy. It is dark, it is depressing, it is heart-wrenching, but also at the same time, when the Doctor and Nessa leave at the end, there is a moment where there is a glimmer of hope, which instantly after the Doctor leaves, that is just wrecked entirely by another moment, the final closing moment of this story, which just shows that everyone on this planet is doomed, and that is what I like. Mark Platt has not deviated from the fact of what the Cybermen become. He has not made the Doctor the key protagonist of the story that comes in, serves the day, and makes everyone happy. He instead leaves the story an open bookend where we can fill in the blanks and all of these characters that we have learnt and known to love throughout the rest of this story's duration, you just know what the future lies for them. No need I say any more. Uh, this hasn't really been a review, I've noticed that. Very much like the last time I think that I reviewed Spare Parts, it was just like a compliment bombshell endlessly of all these brilliant moments that occur throughout the episode itself. And that is not to say that Spare Parts is without its flaws. For me personally, being a depressing Doctor Who fan that I am, I would have loved to see more body conversion sequences. There is a fair share of descriptive elements where it comes to the cybernetics being applied to people's bodies, but I would have liked to see, funnily enough, what World Enough and Time did, where we got to see Bill Potts being converted, and he had the chest 
guess unit being added and kind of the struggles of that and getting used to it. So very much that story did stuff that spare parts didn't, which when we first heard that World Enough and Time and the Doctor Falls was going to be a thing, there was a major concern for me and quite a lot of other people that that story was going to try and rewrite spare parts. But having just recently watched that story again prior to a Series 12 airing for some reason, I just had a spare few hours, and then listening to this story recently as well, both the episodes do completely different things. It's very clear that Moffat has got inspiration from Spare Parts as a story. It's used a few of the components from the episode, such as spaceships going out into the universe to then develop other colony worlds out there. We see World Enough in Time utilising that and doing that. If anything, both of the stories complement each other incredibly well and kind of shows that the Cybermen's journey is forever ongoing. And this episode, as I say, could have had a few changes in there. I would have liked to see more conversion sequences. But also to note, I don't think that this episode is for those younger viewers. Because this episode is darker, it does have a few very haunting sequences in there as well. And some that are arguably quite distressing. And I imagine that if Big Finish did a story like this today, it wouldn't be as risky as Spare Parts was back in the day. Because it is very adult in the way that it does things, which I don't think Big Finish would would do these days. We know that their audience is a lot wider and encompasses a few of the younger listeners in there, as opposed to it just being for the more dedicated, older Doctor Who fan. See, I think there is there's no excuse not to listen to this story. There is, of course, an excuse not to buy the record version. If you don't have the money for that, then fine. Obviously, it's 80 quid. It's expensive. There is no denying that. But the actual download is currently Two ninety nine on the website. When it's on sale, it's ninety nine p. And I do believe, don't quote me on this, it is on Spotify for free. Go and listen to it. There is no excuse. So overall, for the Doctor Who Big Finish LP collector set for the fifth Doctor story, Spare Parts, as written by Mark Platt, originally released by Big Finish in 2002, and then re-released as a part of the Vinyl Records series in 2017, in celebration of it being one of the best stories that Big Finish have ever produced, this is certainly one of those products for the Big Finish collectors, especially fans of vinyl records. I am in fact quite surprised surprised that this record has remained in stock for as long as it has, because the light at the end was in fact released, I do believe, on record, and sold out incredibly quickly, so therefore I'm quite surprised that one of the best Doctor Who stories ever didn't do the same. However, I think that if you are a fan of the story and a fan of the Cybermen and generally just love Big Finish, this is definitely a product for you. I absolutely love the brand new cover art that has been created by Tom Webster, and I love the harkbacks to the original version as well, created by Clayton Hickman. As for the actual story itself, it is flawless in many ways, but if you love your Big Finish and love this story in particular, this is certainly a product that I do recommend purchasing. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this product is exclusive to the Big Finish website and it is limited edition to 500 units so once it is sold out it will be sold out for good so if you are a fan and you are contemplating buying this then I do recommend doing so essentially before it is too late because this is one of those products that you kind of don't really want to miss out on because it is just so cool and lovely and great to have as a part of the collection. And of course, before I finish this review, I would just like to state because a few people do wonder why we get to see some of the singular releases in Sir HMV and Asta and why they don't do stories such as Spare Parts, such as Jubilee. And that is because main range stories such as this do require additional records. This is a 4LP set. The standard releases in HMV and Asta over the past few years have been singular LPs that are only suited for one hour stories. At most the main range stories are around two hours long and therefore require an extra few discs in there in order to make them essentially fit the record itself and that is why they are more expensive and that is why we've not seen any more of them. So maybe if the sales on these increase we might see the Holy Terror released eventually because I would just love to see an upgraded version of that cover with a brand new CGI version of Frobisher that will be a dream come true but hey once again and as always of Doctor Who merchandise only time will tell. 
So thank you very much for watching this review, I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have any questions about spare parts or this vinyl record release, do leave them in the comments section below. I will try my best to answer them at some point in the near future. And as I mentioned at the start of this review, I will leave a link in the description below to purchase this product from the Big Finish website. So thanks again for watching, I shall see you all next time for more Doctor Who reviews. Bye for now.